Good evening, loyal viewers of Vladcast. It's time for another exciting episode of Vladcast. Today, we'll talk about Old Calendar December, and I know you'll enjoy it. At least I hope you'll enjoy it. Uh, I know that I enjoy being here every month or almost every month with the rector of the parish, Father Gregory Joyce. Father, how are you? John, I'm good. Thank you. And I enjoy being with you, and I, I think the viewers will enjoy it. It's a, it's a month which is chock full of stuff, uh, interesting stuff, uh, some unique stuff, and I think that uh, people will enjoy hearing about it, and I hope that they will uh, enjoy participating in the services to the greatest extent possible. In other words, come to church. We'll come to church, but you know now we've changed our, um, our live stream over to MP3, which is a much, which is basically a universal um, sort of uh, format, and so it's much easier for people to listen to the services now. Oh, so in other words, I can finally listen to it when I'm not able to come. To right, church. right. I know that we know that people had trouble. We had a, like a very kind of high tech, high fidelity sort of stream, but it was just really hard to, to figure out. So we decided to, and you know, it sounds really good. When I was in San Francisco a couple of weeks ago, I was listening to the service here as I was driving to church there on the iPhone. It was great. So I, I think that that's going to help also because we know that not everybody can come to every service, and that's okay. Um, but we hope that people will come to most services, and when they can't, then there's the live stream. Okay. So what will they uh, experience if they actually do come to, come to church? Anything well, new in the decor or the, what they'll hear? Any exciting new singers in the choir or new... Uh, repertoire? Or we do. Have they changed the liturgy or anything? We haven't changed the liturgy. We thought that was a little above our pay grade, but we uh, we do have some new singers in the choir, and we do have uh, some additions to our repertoire, and uh, it's it's pretty exciting, actually. And uh, we have now coming up soon. Well, can I get into December or should I wait? Are we still in the preamble? Okay, coming up soon is our children's liturgy, so that's that's really nice because the kids, all, just the young people, sing. Uh, so that's an interesting uh, look at the choir. It's a different choir. It's not the festal choir. Uh, and then we also have a choir that's preparing to sing for the weekday services. And they sang for the first time last Sunday. Uh, if folks go to uh, our website, go to Sound of the Parish, they can, they can hear them. They sang uh, the prayer before communion. Um, you know, I believe, O oh Lord, and I confess. They sang the whole thing in, in Slavonic and then sang it in English. So that was really nice too. So uh, thanks to having uh, Anastasia uh, Klimzo here as our weekday choir director, she's uh, been able to work on some of these things, and it's really great. So we have a weekend choir and a weekday choir. That's kind of how it's shaping up, and, and that's okay. Wow! Yeah. Not every parish could could boast of that. We're really spoiled here, John. If we it just just think what we could do if we had a decent priest. That's what just, I always. You just can't get a second priest. Yeah. Well. Well, we'll see. Well, we keep trying to get some help, but it'll all work out. Um, but thank God we've, we've been able to do some things with that, and that's, that's very exciting. And, and uh, I should say also that Anastasia is uh, heading up uh, a choir for the deanery. We're trying to use uh, music and Russian culture to introduce orthodoxy to places in Michigan that don't have any orthodox church at all. So this is like a, a like a road show. Yeah, kind of. It's a, it is a, it's to introduce people uh, to our music, to our to the Russian culture, and also uh, to talk to people about who might want to form a mission in their Alpina or whatever. Um, so you're so, looking at Alpina. Well, we we're, we're looking at places where there's no Orthodox church around anywhere. The bishop is very specific. He doesn't want us going to places where there already is an Orthodox church. People are being Poaching taken care of. parishioners. Right, there's no reason to do that. But there are lots of places in Michigan where there's nothing, nothing at all. And uh, even some pretty good-sized university towns where there's nothing. And, and we're really looking closely there. Escobana. Uh, well, this Escanaba, that's one place we're looking, and there's uh, some, some other ones too. So, in fact, we kind of have a missionary plan. We're putting together a website for the deanery, and we'll hopefully be releasing that around Christmas. So that's something to look forward to, and, and we kind of have laid out where we think would be a good idea to have parishes, and uh, now we just need people there to agree that that's a good idea. So, nice. Yeah, so that's, that's going on too. So um, it's been an exciting fall. A lot of stuff yeah. going on. I'm looking at the Zoe for Life box over there right yes, now. Yes, yes, that's right. And uh, um, if I was paying attention the other day, uh, the money is not going to Siberia. Not to time. Siberia, no. It's what? Nope, in this our is, backyard? That's right. In Michigan, we have a Zoe for Life chapter now. Uh, most of the work they're doing is in Oakland and in uh, Wayne County. Um, 
actually almost all is in Wayne County right now. It's it's a it's a, a nascent group. Uh, I think we're just starting the second year of the group, um, but we. Um, we're doing a drive on December 11th for Zoe for Life, and there's information about that on the website. Uh, they have specific needs right now, um, especially for boys' clothes. Always diapers. They, need, they always need diapers. Uh, always would be happy with monetary donations, but they need boys' clothes. So I don't know if there's like a rash of boys being born in, in Michigan, uh, but in any case, they need boys' clothes. And well, you know girls take better care of Things. No, that's true too. I'm, I'm not really sure why, but in any case, they need they need boy clothes. And if you go to our website, you can find that it's also on our Facebook page. Um, and we're doing that drive on December 11th, so that's uh, coming up soon. Okay. All right. Um, well, you know, I really want to talk about Saint Saba and his Tipicon. I think that's a great topic. That's one of them. And my... it's appropriate because don't we celebrate his day on the 18th? We do. New stuff. That's right. That's right. Which is the fifth uh, on the old calendar, and this year it's a Sunday. Super. This is a. That's really nice because sometimes you know, in the sort of foreshadow of Saint Nicholas, he gets lost, and the aftershadow of Saint Nicholas, Saint Ambrose of yeah, Milan. He has a long shadow. He does, and and you know that's okay. He's a really good saint. But uh, Saint Saba is the day before. Saint Ambrose the day after. Those are some really good saints too. Very important. Ambrose of Milan. Yes. Very important. Now, why was he important? What did he do? Well, he when was, he was alive, because now he's he's kept busy ever. Right, he's been keeping busy ever since then. Um, but actually, he's important for several reasons. Not the least of which is he was instrumental in Augustine's conversion. Yeah. So, um, but there's a lot of other reasons why he's important. He was a really important uh, Orthodox father, you know, in the West. Um, very solid theology. In any case. He's, he's but a, totally orthodox. At the same absolutely, time. absolutely, and we, we had that. We had that completely. The one church um, until the split. But in any case, you asked me a question. Oh, Saint Saba. Saint Saba. So Saint Saba, um, he was he a Serb? Nope. But uh, there is a, there is a Saint Saba. Several Saint Sabas who are Serbs. They came later. Um, he's he's from a much earlier period. And Saint Saba, uh, well, he was a monastic saint, lived in Palestine, and he wrote down. A typicon, which uh, sort of is a rule of the monastery, how the services are done, how the brothers eat, how they live, how they do their obediences, all this stuff. Very, uh, very sort of uh, detailed uh, rule book, for lack of a better word, of how, how you live life in the monastery. Now, do you think that he made it up all out of whole cloth or just kind of wrote down what they were doing? Oh, he just wrote down what they were doing there, yeah. Yeah, and, and what's really interesting, too... Um, those monastic fathers who lived in his neighborhood of Palestine uh, at that time... Which was, uh, what, the St. You know, Sava's Monastery? Yeah, St. Sava's Monastery, but there are other, there's all kinds of monasteries in that desert, and, and lots of hermits and this so on and so forth. This is the desert where yeah, that's right. John the Baptist... That's right, exactly. And Christ, mm -hmm. and Mary of Egypt. All of busy them, place. that's right, very busy. And so um, those fathers have sort of a, a, an influence on that Tipicon too. In any case, for us in the Russian church, this is important because we use that Tipicon. That's a Tipicon that's used in, in Jerusalem still, and it's also used in the Russian church. And so the, the influence of the Palestinian fathers is, is great in the Russian church because of that. Um, so it's, it's very interesting. And it has, it has certain dynamics to it that are slightly different than the Tipicon uh, that was used in Constantinople. N nothing major. But it's just sort of a very interesting thing. And for us, since we use the St. Saba's Tipicon, um, St. Saba's always a big day. Big day for us. Okay, so now I'm confused. How did the Russians get hold of the Palestinian version of the uh, practices if the Greeks brought... Well, there were always two sort of oh. things going on at the same time. The more monastic practice and the more um, cathedral practice, mm. right? And uh, probably both came to Russia, and it just ended up... You have to say that monasticism really found fertile soil in Russia, in, in, in Rus, and then in Russia, in Ukraine, Belarus, all of these places. And so I guess it just turned out that way that the, the monastic Tipicon was the one that sort of came to the fore, and then the cathedral Tipicon just oh. wasn't used anymore. Um, so, yeah, it's very, it's very interesting, and I think very helpful for us. So, anyway, it's... Um, 
in the Russian church, we use this Tipicon, and St. Saba is the 18th of, uh, of December, and it's a Sunday. So uh, it'll be very nice. We'll have St. Saba, and then the day after, we'll have St. Nicholas. And the day before is St. Barbara. She was the one who the Papa wanted uh, her to marry some pagan guy, and she said, no thanks, Daddy. Correct. She's one of those. There are quite a few of these uh, young women martyrs. St. Catherine is probably the other one that's best known. Oh, she's in uh, December. Yep, she's in December too. Yes, she's December too. So St. Barbara and also St. John of Damascus on St. Yes. Barbara's Day. That's a big day. That's a big day. That's your patron saint. Uh, and that's a big day. So um, we were looking for a way to serve liturgy that day, but I just don't I think that how. it's going to happen. Mm. I know how to do it. How, how cancel we do? the bake sale. Well, we could cancel the bake sale, but that probably would be detrimental to our future long-term health. That's meant. Yes. Okay. So I think we're going to not do that, and uh, this year we're going to just we're going to have to content ourselves with a, a malaban probably before vigil on the seventeenth, and and I think that'll be good, and um, and I think Saint Barbara and Saint John will forgive us. Next year it'll be a Sunday, so we'll definitely be serving for that. Okay. Yeah. So congratulations on your upcoming names day. Why? Thank you, Father. You're welcome. And so that's it for December. What? See you next month? Or yeah, I think so. That's about no, no, uh, no. There's more. Yeah. There's the ball. There's the ball. Yep. There's that's Saint Basil's Day. Yep. That's right. Although I guess well, no, that's, no, no, no. That's, that's January. That's the vigil. Yeah, yeah. And but it is you know the ball started uh, all those many years ago as a. Uh, this is the nativity. The ball. yes, the nativity ball as the old. Uh, style New Year's, right? Mm -hmm. Study Novigod. In Russian, it sounds kind of mm -hmm. nice, rolls off the tongue. The old style New Year's ball. Not right a on lot the... of days you can eat steak on a Friday. That is correct. And uh, most years, we have two non fasting Fridays between Nativity and the day before the Theophany. But this year, it doesn't work that way. Uh, Nativity is on a Saturday, and when that happens, there's just one, and that means that it's the old uh, style New Year's ball. Our old style New Year's is the non fasting Friday, and we will have our ball on that day. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun that kind of, you know, back to our, our beginnings of, of when we first uh, started this ball many years ago. And it's been a ball ever since. It has been a ball ever since, and I think it's great. It's a great opportunity for, for everybody to get together after the, the long. Uh, winter fast and to kind of celebrate this okay. very significant uh, set of feasts that we have this time of year. The one that we think of most is, is Nativity, but of course uh, there's also Theophany, which comes in January. And all these are very festive, very important times. In fact, it's so festive that not even marriages are allowed between it during this time. Isn't that yeah. interesting? We think of marriage... It's not a fast. It's not a fast, but it's such a feast huh. that there's this assumption that everyone is rejoicing in the feast, everyone is in church all the time, celebrating the Lord's incarnation. There's no time. So I, I think that's very interesting. Okay. Weber's? Oh. Weber's this year. Yep, we're at Weber's this year, and there's, a, there's already a save the date. You can get the information on our Facebook page, and more will be coming out on our website and email and so on and so forth. So we hope everybody can join us. It's a lot of like fun. buying tickets. Buying tickets is the way to do that, and we want, we want people to do that. Uh, early and often. It's, uh, if we buy them early enough, they make great gifts for Christmas. Okay. Uh, do we need to backtrack? Yeah, we're almost. Maybe, we're already uh, in January. There's a few other things. What did we have? Some kind of uh, more, more. Any more saints? A oh, lots. Or uh, important. The holidays or feasts or oh, I know what I wanted to ask mm -hmm. about um, nativity. Yes. It's on a Sunday. Yes? No? Saturday. Oh, it's on a Saturday. Saturday this year, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So church Saturday and then Sunday too. Yep, that's right. We get the bonus of, of having church two days in a row like that. I mean, we usually serve the second day of Nativity anyway, oh, okay. right? But that's often, that's a weekday. It's not a, you know, hugely attended service. Um, and But in any case, we're, we, we will do that. And then instead of serving the third day, we, we were going to serve the third day on Monday, but... We decided that we're going to serve for the 14,000 martyrs of Bethlehem, the, the, the young children that were killed by Herod, Herod. We have a really lovely icon of the feast that the women of the parish uh, raised money for, and uh, it just seems real appropriate that we would do that. So. All right. Now, uh, Nativity Liturgy. Yes. Morning? 9 o'clock? Yes, we, it's, it's going to be at 10. Um, we, we do it in the morning, and uh, it's interesting because 
when people come from Russia now, they, they almost assume that we're going to do it at midnight. It's become very popular to do it there then, which, I mean, is great and, and love that idea, but it just never, I don't think that was a big thing before the revolution. And mm. so, you know, some things have changed in Russia in, in that time, and I, that seems to be one of them. And that's fine, it's, it's perfectly good, but uh, we don't do the Midnight Liturgy here for, for Nativity, we do it for Pascha and a few other times during the year when we, when we need to, but um, yeah, it'll be at 10 o'clock on, on Saturday, uh, January 7th. But we'll serve the day before also on the, uh, the, uh, the Christmas Eve. Um, that's an evening. There's the evening, there's a vigil, but we also in the morning we have uh, the Royal Hours and we have uh, Vespers and we have Divine Liturgy. It's a very beautiful service. Um, and towards the end, we bring out the nativity icon into the middle of the church. Oh, that's Sachin. Uh -huh, Sachinlik. Oh, very, very nice. Jesus. Yes, it was just in Sachinlik. Very nice service. So we have that too. The so, sixth. Yep. So we have the liturgy on the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, and we'll take a little break and we'll do it on the eleventh. All right. Church school. Is church school. On vacation. Church school will have a vacation yeah. during the during the school but the break. Kids will have homework. Of course, well, at least mine. They yeah. like homework. That's what they tell me. Yeah. Well, anyway, they don't really tell me that, but I wish they would tell me that, and uh, they will have a little project that they do. Not a big one. A little project to do over the nativity break, um, and I think that it's good for them to be a little engaged. So some little tiny bit of writing, and I I think they'll enjoy that. Okay. Um, now these uh, these three Hebrew. Uh, youths and the fiery furnace. They're a big thing in, uh, well, they pop up a lot all over the place in our um, uh, hymnography. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But they're, they're big because they have, what, a, a, a feast sometime? It is, yes. Uh, it's, and Daniel, too. Yeah, they're all on the same day, and if I'm not mistaken, that'll be the 30th of December. We, it's during our youth conference that we'll have up in uh, oh, up in Lake Odessa. We need to talk about the youth. We should because we have some youth. Yeah, we do have youth. We have youth, and uh, so parents. Lake Odessa. Lake Odessa, On the which Black is sea. such a yeah, exactly. It's the Black Sea, not as quite as warm as the Russian Black Sea. I've never seen palm trees in this Lake Odessa, but um, parents of teens, fourteen to well, even little post teen into into early college years. Um, we need to register the kids. Get them out of the house. Yep, years. that's right. You're going to even more. It's the 27th to the 31st. I mean, you could leave the state if you want. You could have a vacation. Um, but yeah, please, it's very important to register the kids. This is one of the most important things that, that we offer to the, to the teens because they always want to be fitting in, right? This is a big thing for teenagers. And when they go to this and they have 30, 40, 50, 60 other Orthodox kids their same age, they see that they do fit in, that they're not just some outsider. And they like it. Of course they do. Yeah. Of course. And, and then, then like I mean, the Bishop Peter's going to... Bishop Peter will be there and, you know, of course they complain because they have to. They're trying to train us, you know, but still, um, more or less, it's really good and they, they really enjoy it and they come back and they've always, they're really full of their uh, faith and, and it's so good. So uh, parents, please register the kids. There are uh, scholarships available if you, if you can't afford the tuition and, and that's fine. And we'll make sure that they get up there. Um, also for adults who wanna help with this project, um, everybody's gonna be flying into Detroit Metro who's gonna be flying in. Uh, and we need to get them from Detroit Metro to Lake Odessa. So adults who could help, we'd really appreciate uh, being able to do that because, of course, we can't get help them to... Help with the driving. Help with the driving because we can't get them to all fly do in they, on one are, flight. Are they going to uh, uh, show up at uh, Metro and then drive to Lake Odessa the same day or do they need yes. a, a night? No, I, I think we'll just... We'll, well, as far as well, what it looks like now, John, is that... They'll fly in on the 27th, and we will transport them there on the 27th. So I don't, and then they'll have to get back there on the 31st. Okay. Um, so we need some help with that. Um, we know that the 31st is kind of a busy day um, for for a lot of our parishioners, um, but that's mostly in the evening, and the kids need to be transported in the morning. Uh, and they're coming from all over the diocese. Yeah, from all over the diocese. We St. even Louis? Uh, yeah, Cincinnati. You bet. Texas, of course. Oklahoma. Yep. Fabulous. All over, and even some, some kids from outside the diocese. We always get a few who, who come and want to hang out with us, and I think that's great. So it's, They're uh, welcome. Well, they are welcome, and, I, and that diversity is good for us. If we just have our own people, even, well... Even folks from the East Coast can crash our Midwest party. Well, in moderation. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have a limit, but we don't mm -hmm. talk about that. All right. Um, 
Do you think anybody's still watching? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I think so. Yeah, and the the way everything that's things fall very interestingly this year. Like Saint Herman is on a Sunday, so usually we go up to uh, to Lake Odessa. That's their feast day and celebrate there. Oh, that's the Christmas that's on Sunday. Yeah, oh, yeah, right, it's on Christmas. it's on the the Western Christmas. Ah. Is on the 25th, that's St. Herman's Day, so we'll have liturgy here for St. Herman, which is nice because we basically morning. only, yeah, in yeah. the morning, we basically only do it every seven years because otherwise we're up at uh, Lake Odessa, right? So, but such an important saint, America's first saint, uh, you know, really, really an important uh, person in, in our Orthodox lives here in America, so we'll celebrate him on December 25th here at St. Vladimir's, and I'm looking forward to that. Terrific. Mm -hmm. But we will. Yeah, usually he's off on the side as you come in. He's on the left when you come into the church. Um, and he's, we have a nice, very nice carved icon, uh, wooden carved icon, simple, Beautiful. of St. Herman. And he was a simple person. Um, so I think it's very appropriate. So yeah, we invite everybody to come uh, on that day. Um, and I think that you can easily come to liturgy that day and still have plenty of time to open presents uh, if you have family who are celebrating on the 25th. So we covered it? I think that's a good place to end. All right. Thank you, John. I'm allowed to You're allowed. shake. Absolutely. I'll get the blessing later. That's okay. Good. We'll, we'll Photoshop that in. Good. Okay, dear viewers, we'll see you next time with Vladcast. Come to church. See ya.